Hi, everybody, and welcome to our talk. Yeah, about Chaos Monkey for Spring Boot. My name is John Fletcher. And I'm Manuel. And we work at Codecentric, which is an IT consultancy in Germany. And as part of our work, we help clients with chaos engineering, and we also help maintain the Chaos Monkey for Spring Boot project, which is a plugin for Spring Boot. So today, the, what we mainly want to do today is show you a live coding demo of how it works and how you can get started with Chaos Monkey for Spring Boot. Uh, but first, perhaps it makes a bit of sense to just give a quick introduction so that we're on the same page about what Chaos Engineering is and, and why we do it. And then at the end, we'll round up with a little bit of project history and where we think we're going in the future. So the first question I want to put to you is, are you feeling optimistic? Because we developers, we're a positive bunch. We program things and we know they're going to work, don't we? I mean, we sometimes, you know, sometimes you don't even need to test it because you just, you just know it's going to work. I mean, how many times were you in a, in a sprint demo or something and something went wrong? You know, the team only developed that a few days before and they try and demonstrate it and then something doesn't work as expected. And this is a bit of a, a chronic problem that we developers have. I like to call it hope-driven development. And this problem has been identified uh, quite a long time ago and people realized we need to write tests, you know? So uh, we started with unit tests and things and it's a pretty simple thing. And then of course, on a bigger scale, you realize we don't just want to test one little component that it works as expected, a class or something. We also want to have integration tests, which are going to test how different parts of our application work together. And, you know, so at some point, test-driven development started getting uh, talked about. Actually, the first book about it was released in 2002. So this message has been out there for a while that we should be testing, that we should be uh, checking automatically that our software is running. And I think it's slowly caught on. I think we've got the message now. Uh, developers around the world have basically come to the point where it's not just testing as some optional extra or whatever, but rather they're building it into their development process, and it's just a part of development, whether you're doing TDD or not, it's a, just a critical part of, of software development. But the interesting thing about, about that is that when this whole, you know, when this testing, for example, this book was written in 2002, back then, the, the main architecture was a kind of a monolithic software architecture. You had basically one big piece of software and requests would come in and be answered. Uh, and so that, that fit to, it made a lot of sense to be writing unit tests and integration tests for that, for that software. But today, the world has moved on. The world's moved on from that monolithic architecture. And today, we've got people like Netflix and Amazon and things they're talking about. They've been talking for well, about almost 10 years now about microservice architectures. And we've all, we've drunk the Kool-Aid. We've said, yeah, we want that. We want microservice architectures. We want to be cool. You know, being cool is a very important part of software development. And so we're building these architectures and we're still sort of, we're just getting the message. We've just got the message with unit testing and maybe some integration testing. And meanwhile, we're building these microservice architectures. But the thing is, these guys that built these, started with these microservice architectures, they've moved on. And they've realized that it's not enough to just do unit tests or even integration tests inside a, a piece of software because the architecture has moved into a bigger picture with a lot of different services communicating. This is a, a distributed system. That's a pretty good definition of a distributed system, I think. Now, if we are gonna build this distributed systems, then we're gonna, we're gonna follow the, these you know, trendsetters like Amazon and so forth, we're gonna also need to build and put in place the tools that they use to test these systems and to check their resilience and to improve them. Otherwise, we're gonna end up in chaos. And I think many of us have experienced that. Yeah, if you can go forward to that slide, Manuel. The downtime, we're, just, we're, we're putting things into production and we're fighting fires and we're finding problems because of the, with all the benefits we're getting from our microservice architectures, there's a cost as well. So with that 
we want to introduce we, we want to introduce you to chaos engineering. Chaos engineering is well, you can read it yourself. It's it's about experimenting on systems and to build confidence in those systems and to make them stronger to to withstand turbulent conditions. And in the the back the behind all this is really the bottom line that we want to enable businesses to achieve their goals. Sometimes we lose the focus on that as technical people, but actually what we're wanting to do is to enable our business to achieve whatever their mission is. And sometimes we talk about maximizing availability, but really it's about even if failures come, we want to still be able to achieve that business mission. So with that little bit of intro, we're going to jump into the live demonstration. We're going to use a piece of, here's the link to the little project we're going to use. It's just a very small Spring Boot project, which, because if you want to demonstrate a Spring Boot plugin, then you're going to need a, a project to, to plug, a, plug it into. So it's a very simple application, and I'll hand over to Manuel to explain a bit about it. Sure. Um, hey, everyone. Um, it's really a very basic um, Spring application. We have a movie controller, just a regular REST controller with one endpoint called movies. Um, our application is supposed to recommend some movies, like you have different streaming services which recommend movies. We have like this use case. Uh, um, the REST controller will call a service, regular Spring service, which will pick any movie, any for simplicity, um, stuff we just took a random movie so no big deal in like having this calculator based on viewing preferences so yeah um, I can start it and show you how it goes <clears throat> so I'm building <laughs> um, I will use Postman to demonstrate it we also um, can share the link to the collection in case you want to try on your own in Discord afterwards. So just some movies with some titles and duration. That's the application. So. <clears throat> right. Now. Let's add chaos engineer. That's that's a simple application. There's no there's no plugin in there. So what we first thing we want to do if we want to get started with Chaos Monkey for Spring Boot is we're going to need to add it in there as a dependency. We can add it as a regular um, dependency in Maven or Gradle. What what's your favorite build tool? Um, latest version. Um, as an alternative, you don't need to include it in your dependencies. You can also um, add it to your class loader, for example, if you don't want to have such a tool always um, in your dependencies. Um, so, and we also need some like configs for that. I will just paste it in that what I have. Um, so, we need to run the, the application with uh, the Chaos Monkey Spring profile enabled um, itself we need to enable the Chaos Monkey as well. Then we have some thing called watchers. So um, this is like what we're going to attack. It's like we have different watches, for example, in this case, watcher service true means we attack um, classes which are annotated with the spring annotation at service. So um, we have also an attack level means um, Every X request is going to be attacked. So means level one means every request is going to be attacked. And what kind of an attack we start. So latency active. So we introduce like network latency to our REST call. Let's see how it behaves. Um, our regular movie endpoint, you saw the time, like 15 milliseconds. And now did I restart it? Let me check. <clears throat> I'll wait. I know what I missed since latest IntelliJ. I need to refresh Maven first. <laughs> All right.
always the pain of doing live coding. <laughs> yeah, the, the point about the class loader, which Manuel mentioned, just to make that a bit clearer, is mm. basically means when you run Java minus char to start the application, you can pass in some, uh, a, 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 uh, what do you call it? You can pass in an option and then give the link to the, to the Chaos Monkey of Spring with jar. Exactly. So it's ready up. Um, we enable Chaos Monkey and you see the request time start to rise. We have like between one second and about three seconds. Um, that's yeah, not... that's the, the default time. So if we don't set a time, the default latency which we add is between one and three seconds. Exactly. But we can choose to set that manually if we want to, a fixed latency with these two properties, which Manuel's going to add now. Yeah, so latency range start and latency range end, you can define uh, a range. So just fix it to three seconds and now we ex expect every request is going to take three seconds to respond except the first one takes a little bit longer. Now you see 3.4 and we have this like three seconds. Alrighty, what else can we do? Um, we can also do that on a REST controller, for example, like we just detect service, but we can also Enable it on REST controller. Um, yeah, you might wonder now what kind of latency <laughs> we have now. Is it still three seconds or do they add up? And as you might guess already by now, they, they add up since now we are attacking REST controller and service together each um, each one takes another additional three seconds and first call again, some startup time, but it will add to six seconds. All right. Um, now it's kind of a bit um, of a pity always to restart your application. You usually don't want to do that, um, but we've got you covered. There, there's an actuator endpoint, um, which we can use to like control Chaos Monkey. Yeah, so if you, you might know actuator from, for example, health checks, it's a standard endpoint, which is in Spring Boot, the slash actuator slash health endpoint. But actuator actually is basically allows extensions. So you can plug into the actuator. It's just a REST endpoint, basically a REST interface. You can plug in there and add additional functionality. So with Chaos Monkey for Spring Boot, we've got some extra actuator endpoints which we've added on there. And we can use those endpoints to control all the things which we've been just doing via configuration till now. Yeah, we can like have an overview over the current default setting, so um, like the mentioned one to three seconds default values, our attacks, it's enabled at the moment. So we can control it now. So um, let's do the same, like, or at least something similar. Now we enable REST controllers through the actuator interface. Um, so you just pass in a regular JSON object um, where it's the same like the properties just as a JSON. So we are attacking REST controllers and this time we don't want to have latency. We actually want to have exceptions thrown when we call this REST endpoint. But only on every second call approximately. That's what the level two means there in that screen. Exactly. So first call already gets this exception. Second one is still this movie endpoint. So, all right. Now there seem to be like some playground examples you might 
store they add it's not really a real business um, value or a realistic uh, feature now let's assume we have our databases down and um, we want to simulate something like that um, so we can also um, have repositories attacked so we're just doing that so we enabled repository um, exceptions, but we want to have a bit more of a realistic exception. So um, just a connection exception, we can pass a, um, a custom exception here and with a parameter connection time tower. Yeah, so because in reality, if you lost the connection to the database, that's the exception that you would actually get. Exactly. And if you saw, I think we had a before list, there's a few different things you can attack, basically the main spring annotations, so component, uh, rest controller, service, and repository. And in this case, we're attacking the repository. Mm, exactly. So we have already first call an exception. And if you inspect the logs, here you see connect exception, connection timeout as we expected. So um, we always do this still by hand. Um, we didn't automate it yet. So it would make sense to automate that what we just did manually by hand. And there's tools for that. For example, um, there is a tool called Chaos um, Toolkit, which you can define so-called experiments. So, um, First, maybe, maybe I could just explain quickly. Chaos yeah. Toolkit is a is a separate piece of software. It's an open source tool, which is it's not related to Chaos Monkey for Spring Boot, but integrates with different Chaos engineering tools. So it has a plugin for Chaos Monkey for Spring Boot, and so we're going to show that now. Exactly. Um, in Chaos engineering, you usually um, call steady state. It means like um, if the system is stable and runs okay. Um, that's the steady state. So first off, the experiment um, have a title and needs to have a steady state. Before, if this steady state is not there, we won't start the experiment at all. So um, usually we want to have the movies recommended. Um, so how can we check that? We have a call on our movies endpoint. Um, it should take less than one second it's called timeout for um, any reason. Um, and tolerance means like the status code you would get or expect. So we expect um, the movie's endpoint gets called in less than a second and returns 200 for OK. And we call that probe. We can request the movie. So afterwards, we enable Chaos Monkey and we configure through actuator, um, our attacks. So we say each, each request going to be attacked. And we want to have the same exception as we did before with like connection timed out. Next, um, we configure what we're going to attack, repository, like just before. So here is repository through. It's basically the same thing we just did with Postman. And in the end, we disable Chaos Monkey again to ensure um, everything happens normally after that experiment. Um, this rollback happens, um, doesn't matter if the experiment is going to succeed or fail, the rollback will happen. So let's just try it out. So what the toolkit is going to do before it actually makes any changes, it's going to check that the steady state is actually there. Because if the system's not running as it's supposed to before you, you know, add any errors, then you don't need to add any errors. <laughs> that's that's the first step you see here. Mate. You can explain it, Mano. Yeah, it's like first it checks um, can the steady state be matched? Can our movie recommend it? And we see. Um, it's not in a given tolerance, so it's not returning any in the first second. Um, that's probably because we are 
um, still have enabled the chaos monkey. So we just run it again. Um, now it's a little bit more than we expected. Um, so we configure the attacks and enable chaos monkey. We request the movie again, and it doesn't work now in the given tolerance. So it, chaos monkey will disable it, and the experiment will end with the state deviated. So they tell us uh, a weakness might uh, may have been discovered. Yeah. So obviously we've told the repository to throw an exception every time it's called. And so the exception is being thrown. The application is giving a 500 error back and the steady state probe is checking for a 200 and saying, no, that's a 500. And that's why the experiment is failing. Hmm. But business doesn't want that. So business has come to us and they want that every time a user requests a movie that they get one. It doesn't matter if the database is down or not. If the database is down, then maybe we don't get a movie which is exactly aligned to their viewing preferences. Maybe we just return them a generic movie. So right. if the database is not there, we want to return them any movie, a movie that everybody likes. Yeah, like a top 10 movie of all time, like Titanic, right? Perfect. <laughs> So we prepared something. Um, check out my branch. So our movie controller is still the same. Our movie service changed a bit. Um, now we have our favorite movie, the fallback movie defined. And if for some reason recommended movie fails with an exception, um, we just return our fallback movie. So you might wonder what this um, kind of syntax try-off is. Um, this is just um, from a library called Waiver. It's included as the only dependency in resilience for J. Um, it doesn't matter, actually, it's just syntactic sugar. You can also use a try, regular try catch block. So in any case, get recommend movie fails we return our Titanic movie. And now um, we can check if our movie service still works. So it still works. Now let's rerun the experiment and see how it goes if we still have a weakness. All right. Um, Time out. Time out. It took longer than one second. That, we didn't expect that. Yeah. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> Try again. All right. Now it looks more the one we aimed for. So we did the probe. We can request a move in one second. Um, we configure everything again. Um, check if after Chaos Monk is enabled, um, the movie can still recommend and it actually can. And afterwards, we roll back and we have an experiment completed and it succeeded. Yeah. So if we think about back in the diagram I showed at the start with the microservices architecture, how does that apply? Well, you can basically attack your individual services and then you can see how do the other services respond when these kind of things are happening? How does the system as a whole respond when one service starts giving back latency on the calls or throwing exceptions or these kinds of things? Yeah. And you could integrate such experiments in your CI pipeline if you want. All right. I think we're going, we went through to the demo. Yeah, we wanted to show a couple more slides. Just to talk a little bit about the history of the of the project, basically there was a guy named Benjamin Wilms who started the project, Chaos Monkey for Spring Boot, because he wanted to test his, he was writing applications with circuit breakers and other kind of uh, resilient things in them, or supposedly resilient, but he, he needed to test that. He wanted to see if it actually works, what he's doing. And he didn't have a tool which he could use easily for that. So he wrote his own. And that's how he started Chaos Monkey for Spring Boot. And he used to work at CodeCentric with us, but the CEO said to him, why don't you leave and start a startup about chaos engineering? So he actually did that. It's called Chaos Mesh, the company he started. 
And he asked some of us if we want to take over. So that's how we ended up uh, running the maintenance of the project. But we're not the only contributors. There are a lot of great community contributors helping. And we want to encourage you as well. If you would like to get involved, we are pretty responsive on the issue queues. And we're very welcoming to people that want to get involved. Maybe you, you want to see something, want to have a bit more to do with chaos engineering, not sure how. You could have a look at the code and see if you can do something. All right, then. I want to tell you a little bit about our recent change in our previous release, in our last release. Um, um, in our latest release, it's possible to schedule attacks by Chrome expressions. So, for example, you can like um, just kill your application at a given time. For example, here every hour our application is killed, and we can like doing it more resilient to not getting killed. Um, or what we introduced to is a memory attack, so we can check um, we can fill memory to a certain amount of time um, like to produce out of memory exception or see how your app just behaves on high memory load um, it was a little bit tricky to implement so it's sometimes a little bit flaky because um, of different JVMs different garbage collection just try it out and give us feedback also, what's our, on our roadmap, upcoming features for Chaos Monkey for Spring Boot will be, um, we already mentioned it in the talk, during the talk, um, the attack level or assault level is not really deterministic. So it's like, if you have that attack level two, so it's about every second, not every second call. So we thought about making them more like deterministic also, we don't have a way to um, attack outgoing calls. So, um, so we're working on attacking REST template or a newer web client. Um, and we haven't done much with um, the reactive stack. We try a little bit ha having more that tested and think about um, useful features for Webflux and Reactor. And that's already it. Um, feel free to contact us. Um, here are our details. details um, and questions. OK, well, thank you very much for your talk. Uh, really insightful. So we have uh, a lot of questions on the Discord channel. So I'm going to go through uh, some of them. Maybe you can answer them for the uh, community, for the people that are watching the live stream. So first one is, uh, can we change the configuration at runtime? So maybe enabling and disabling all these attacks at runtime? Yeah, you can do that through like the actuator interface. So, mm -hmm. but um, John, you don't think there's any other way, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's exactly what we want though. I mean, with the actuator interface, that's uh, that's the best way to do it at runtime. Mm -hmm. And as we showed with the, the chaos, the experiments, sorry, the chaos toolkit experiments, you saw that all running within a few seconds that uh, was switched on and switched off again. So yeah, that's that's the way to do it. Yeah, so you just make rest calls to the actuator interface and it will work out. Lovely. So can we have multiple watchers at the same time? That's another question from another member of the community. Yes, we can. <laughs> Actually, we have that solved or answered uh, on the Discord channel, but it's, uh, well, for the people well, who are watching a live stream. Yeah, I mean, the, there's, I don't know what's been written in Discord because there's some news on that. Basically, at the moment, the watches are, you can have multiple watches, but then you will be attacking all those things with the same attack at the same time. So it's kind of like all added together, as it were. and what we had a, a request just the other day in the in on github that someone said hey i'd love to be able to turn this watcher on with this attack and then have that watcher on with that attack and so have a kind of a layered configuration with different kinds of things going on at once in the same application and uh, that person actually even offered to implement it so we are in discussion about designing that feature and possibly implementing it sounds 
Sounds interesting. Lovely. Uh, next question. Is there a project to integrate Chaos Monkey in Spring Boot Admin? Are there any plans for that integration? Not that we know of, at least. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Johannes just uh, I mentioned to ask you uh, to be safe <laughs> uh, with his answer. Uh, more questions. Go on, to GitHub. Go on to GitHub and make an issue and convince it. Right, I mean, everything's open source, right? Actually, so, uh, yeah. The Spring Boot admin actually is searching for contributors as well, so keep an eye open. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, more questions. Is uh, exposing some extra metrics for Spring Boot uh, applications? Um, I'm not really sure about this one. We kind of use micrometer but I haven't got my fingers on it. So I don't know, John, did you do more in that terms? No, no, to okay. my knowledge, we are not exposing any uh, like statistics or anything like that. All right, uh, more questions. Uh, can we add uh, these tests in uh, GitLab pip pipelines? Yeah, so that's something which unfortunately the chaos toolkit doesn't have doesn't make it really simple out of the box but because they don't like the chaos toolkit will execute it doesn't give for example a j unit style report or something it just gives that output which we saw and it always has the same exit code but you can grep for the the text which tells you the experiment passed or failed and grep will have a different exit code depending on whether it matches the string or not so you can build something. And I've talked to the uh, guy that's mainly responsible for the Chaos Toolkit, um, Russ Miles, about that. And he said that quite a few people are doing sort of like customized solutions for that at the moment. And so he didn't actually want to introduce breaking changes to what they're doing. <laughs> so at the moment, it's, uh, that's the situation. That's the stand at the moment. You can do it with uh, something like that. OK. Lovely. Well, thank you very much for your talk. Uh, we have uh, some more questions on the Discord channel. So if you can join, spend a couple of minutes uh, on the Discord channel, that would be great. Right? Oh, yeah. So, well, thank you very much for your talk. Really insightful. So we're going to go for a break now, and I'll see you thank in you about 10 minutes. All right. Bye. Thanks for having us. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks.